Welcome back to the channel. I'm Summer Dungeon Guy. This episode is Storytelling by Map Making. Alrighty, folks. Well, we're assuming you have a little bit of experience with Incarnate already, so I'm not going to go through every detail, though there is going to be some map making uh, instructional pieces going on inside of this. Our goal here is to show how we can generate plot themes just by making a map. Now, I'm going to go through and pick some of my uh, more standard uh, the things I like to fall back on, standard choices as far as building a map itself, and hopefully we can go through these and give you some sort of idea of how to make some plot points. Now the next thing you do, you're going to basically draw your basic landmass and tool selected there is a little shovel icon on the top left, and here it doesn't really matter what you choose, you can choose any shape you want. Let your hand just wiggle over the mouse if you need to. That's going to give you a baseline for what you're going to do. And again, maybe you're stuck on ideas. Maybe you're not really sure what you should be working on. You don't know which way your campaign's going to go. So you know what? Just draw a shape. Organic, wild, wicked. Do whichever you like. Because at the end, it may not matter. But it's going to give you a basis to start with. Now we go through and make a few edits here and there just to sort of smooth out these coastlines. You know. Nothing huge. It's all changeable. All of this is editable further on down the road. Now, obviously I like, uh, say this example, I like seafaring adventures. So we're going to use more of a island theme to the whole thing. So, you know, I'm going to cut through here, I'm just making a few, leaving a few little islands behind so that we have some detail and some other uh, potential for points of interest. Uh, starting off with some mountains. Now I use a couple different colors of mountains. And as you can look through the options, there are hundreds and hundreds of options inside of Incarnate. And I like to search for mountains and choose some of these varying colors. And that gives it a little bit of depth of color, sort of promotes a different atmosphere. And honestly, just stick them on there. You know, you can't really do a whole lot wrong uh, at this point. There, you know, there are no mistakes. They're only happy accidents. So we're gonna just kind of dot some mountains through here, you know, filling it in a little bit. Maybe uh, this pass is sort of blocked out by mountains and, yeah, so we're just going to add some filler down in through here and sort of hit up an edge here. Now, all the while I'm slightly with the W and S keys changing the size of the mountains and I'm going to switch over to the large style mountain format and we're going to switch it up to different colors of mountains. We're going to, again, S and W to switch the size as you're going to give it some depth of scale. And we're just going to start another set of mountains down here. So maybe this one. Uh, sort of extends up towards the greener mountains at the top. Yeah, and then what we'll do is we'll actually blend those back together here momentarily. You know, running along the coastline, it's going to give us some impassable terrain by sea, sort of a protected sort of sort of place. And again, changing sizes and uh, have it set to automatically change the asset each time it generates one, so it gives you some variation. Now, in this little section in the middle, we're just gonna we're just gonna dot some uh, some brown mountains into the green mountains, right? And in a second, we're going to go over here and going to kind of scatter some green mountains through there as well. Now, again, sort of blends it together like these two mountain ranges have come together. And again, not so much a map making tutorial, but we're going to get to the point where we start making campaign decisions here in a few minutes. Now, uh, we're going to choose some other mountain assets. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to start over here, and I like to do mountains as my baseline because that's sort of how the territory was formed. You know, if you're if you're doing mountains, it's going to give you a good starting point for where to put your water. You know, where civilizations would be found. You know, and if you're a traditional fantasy player, you're going to think that maybe dwarves come from mountains. So, you know, what area do we have set up for them? And again, as you can see, I'm just kind of tracking along the edge. Honestly, if you put them in the middle of the continent, that's fine too. You know, if you put them on the outside, that's great. You can make different shapes. You know, sometimes I like to incorporate uh, octopus or uh, squid or weird shapes into the uh, into the middle. You know, you could you could do the outline of a kraken, for example. But you know, that's sort of further down. But we're not really sure where we're going. But we know we have a green area at the top, right? We think traditional fantasy world. We're thinking elves. So we're here in the elf selection. We're just going to take an elf uh, building uh, and we're going to shrink it down a little bit. We're thinking elves are near the green section, which, you know, green elves. We're going to plop a city down. You know, elves can't be by themselves, so we're going to change assets just to sort of broaden up the cities a little bit. 
and we're going to plop another one down, right? So it's going to give you the basis for where the elves are located. And again, we're talking very standard stuff here. If you already have a campaign built, it's a whole lot easier to sort of imagine where these things are going to go. However, you know, we're just kind of starting off from scratch. We're not really sure what we're going to do. So we're just going to, you know, do the best we can. And now we're going to find some tree stamps. And sometimes the benefit here is that there's a lot of stamps inside of Incarnate. And they come with a lot of pre-inset uh, assets. So... Sometimes going through them, it's a little bit tricky, but we're gonna find the tree we like. You know, we're gonna plop a couple down. You know, again, trees only matter a little bit, but we know elves like trees, so we're just gonna use a little brush action. And again, there's almost nothing you can do wrong here, but you know, I'm gonna pop them in and undo because I didn't quite like how they laid, so we're just gonna populate them in right around the mountains so that we make sure that, you know, it blends into the territories. And pretty easy, right? So. Okay, we can change up the brush tools, we can do all this stuff, and like now, we're thinking now, where, where do these forests go, right? So, the Elven Kingdom has to sort of expand a little bit, so we're just going to keep drawing in some trees and, you know, get a little bit of land cover so we don't have so much bare and empty space. Now, talked about mountains and dwarves, well, now we're going to go choose another civilization, so we know some standards, we got dwarves, boop, we're just going to pop in a city here and there, yeah. Maybe one on either side of that bay, you know. You know, you can juggle it around. Like maybe these dwarves are really well defended and, and they have a big mine, right? So we're just gonna take that asset and flip around. We're gonna move some mountains beside it so it sort of fits in its own little space. And then we sort of make ourselves fit the terrain because everything is movable. This is not a concrete object. So we're thinking, okay, so we've got a couple a couple of civilizations, a couple of species. Now, how do they get in between each other? So just doop, boop, 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 boop. We're just gonna draw a little wandering line. You know, give us a basic path for how the civilizations come together. And it's gonna give us some other plot points. What happens at those intersections? Who guards those intersections, right? So, uh, now, humans, of course. Most, most stories have humans in them. So we're just gonna go find some assets that make sense. And I'm just kind of thumbing through, like, Finding something that looks like a city. Again, we're high level here. We're just, just basic world building. Give yourself ideas. Well, these guys are going to be on a peninsula, right? So they're going to kind of control that bay with some defenses. And then that brings forth some ideas, right? So we put them at the end of a peninsula, and now all of a sudden they're defending that bay. So maybe they're the good guys, right? We put a little travel indication. And you want these things to sort of wander throughout your land. You don't want no road is straight unless, you, of course, you live in Rome. And if you're redoing Rome, well, you know, they're maps for that. So I'm just going to back it out a little bit. Then, so we've got some humans, we've got some elves, we've got some dwarves. Now what do we need? Well, if you're if you're really tropey, right? You've got some goblins and orcs and things. But right now we're going to fill in some water, right? Because right now we have some inlets and we have some ocean. But boom, we're going to make a mountain lake because... Water tends to run from high points to low points. We're just going to draw in a little lake here and boop, boop. Okay, we got a river. You know, we're going to fill in around that a little bit, but how are you going to get across that uh, water divide right across the river since that's where our path was? Well, we're just going to go choose bridge and we're just going to, you know, pick amongst any of them. You know, whatever one suits your style at that point, right? We're not going for partic particular historical accuracy and kind of pop it into place and then. See, now we have a way across the river. Now, what are we going to do next? Well, you know, so this river, right? How are we going to cause conflict, right? So we're going to choose some orcs. I know, traditional bad guy stuff. You know, talking trophy. If it's your first campaign or your 15th campaign, sometimes you just need a little basic inspiration. So we're going to juggle a little bit of space here just to make a place for our orc settlements to go maybe they're on either side so the orcs guard the river now your orcs can be good orcs bad orcs you know that's completely up to you but uh either way they're the ones that are going to be on either side of the river now we're going to tuck them into some trees because obviously the orcs wouldn't be wide out in the open well or maybe they would again it's all up to you you know but we give them a little bit of cover and now the orcs have you know what what does cover give us the orcs now have some ambush ability you know, it's sort of a dark forest. Anything could happen there, right? You know, and this is what I'm talking about. Building your campaign just by starting a map. Just, if you're out of ideas, here you go. All right, so we're just going to fill in some trees. You know, giving yourself possibilities. And you can look at those and be like, man, 
look at that. Well, this would be a perfect place for a whatever, right? Made a bridge, made some forest. Now we've got a dark crossing. It's going to be hard to get across. It's controlled by somebody. So passage across that's going to be a little more limited. So boom, now we have a and now we have an encounter opportunity. Like, well, so we've got a couple lakes, right? Well, what's better than having to cross a lake to get to a mysterious cave, right? Any of these, basically any icon on it, almost any of these can be made into a small encounter, a, a plot change, any sort of number of things that we could add or subtract in here just to add those elements of plot down the road. Now, again, you may be making your first or your 15th campaign and maybe you've run dry, maybe you've not, but you know, sometimes, boom, just playing around with a map editor, right? It's going to give you a couple ideas like, well, so we've got this cave, right? So what, how do we get to the cave? Well, we're going to have to have a dock of some sort. Now, again, multiple docks and incarnate, that's really up to you. We're going to choose one that fits. Maybe an abandoned dock because this obviously hasn't been used for a long time, right? This mine was made and maybe it got flooded or perhaps somebody took it over, it got inhabited by ghouls, ghosts, there was a cave in any number of opportunities await you so just think of an icon and think of a story right i know it seems just that simple but what kind of bad things can go on at a cave anyway now we're going to move on to some details we're printing up the map a little bit and you know it, it lacks some some darker elements so now we're just going to go pull up some volcano right we know lord of the rings has done it all these other campaigns have done it but there's a certain mystique about a fiery, lava-filled volcano region, right? You know, do you need something this obvious? No, not necessarily. But again, running out of ideas, bam, there you go. So we're going to stick some uh, volcanoes in there. You know, delete some of the existing mountains. Not a big deal. Just kind of play with it until we get where we want, right? We're going to add some around it, and then... Uh, doo -doo. We're going to add a little flair here momentarily. Let's see. Right, so we got our basic volcanoes. Let's switch it out and do some dark mountains around it, right? Because you're going to sort of permeate the landscape. And then we're going to blend it in with a little bit of, of a brown mountains just to kind of poke them in there like it's up, you know, sticking up through there. Maybe this is a brand new land form, right? How do volcanoes create it? Well, they're created, they, you know, pressure comes up through, through the planet, right? So, boom, maybe this popped in. You know, is that itself a plot twist? Is there suddenly seismic activity somebody needs to investigate? Is this a portal to another realm, right? You know, we're just looking for things that we can go to down the road as side quests or main quests or making new objectives. Again, if you're starting your first campaign, something like this could definitely give you some ideas. I myself did this. You know, just started creating maps on graph paper, if you can imagine that. You know, and, and the maps that sort of lead me to campaign ideas. And, you know, now I'm running campaigns that are multi-years and multi-parties a couple times a week. Yep. All based on some simple maps. See? I'm going to decorate it a little bit because you don't want your map to look boring, right? So we're just going to decorate, move some clouds. And you can use the transform tool down in the bottom of the incarnate, yeah? Uh, we can darken them up a little bit, make them sort of look ominous and sulfurous. You know, anything you want to do. Uh, to kind of add to the ambiance of the map. All right? Just going to play with a few options here. Look how dark and ominous that's coming out, right? And again, maybe that's going to cause uh, maybe it's going to cause vegetation to die. Maybe it's you know going to cause people to move away. Maybe there's going to be abandoned towns outside of it, right? Maybe it's going to catch fire to the landscape. All kinds of possibilities. If you are out of ideas, just start drawing. Right. All right. So we're looking around. Like, where are we at here? Well, maybe. Hmm. Maybe we could uh, change the texture, right? We talked about it expanding through the earth. So we're just gonna darken that a little bit, as though it's killed off some of the vegetation from the heat and the sulfur. You know, is that causing? Uh, is that causing wildlife to die? Is that gonna make it harder for your adventurers to make it through that land? Right. Just, just a couple pieces of color on a map. All of a sudden, you know, we now have an opportunity for rations and water to come into play. Yep, just gonna color around here. Yeah. All right. 
and boom. All right, we can shade that out a little bit. And, uh, again, all along adjusting the size and the transparency of the brushes. Now, path's obviously going to be a little worn because it is an indicated path. Now, you might use a more uh, less opaque uh, brush just to give an impression of maybe less worn paths and things like that. But for right now, we're talking about the main road. And you want to track it under the mountain and stuff just in case you move them later. You know, because we're prone to do, because we can make changes. We're adults. Or we're kids. Either way, we're playing the game. All right. Got some basic paths. All right. See, it's starting to shape up. Now, we are going, what are we going to do with this space up here, right? Well, you know, some of the old fallbacks we could, uh, let's see. What about a tower? Yeah. So, a mysterious tower. You know, tons of assets to choose from. Basically, any one of these can be a starting point for a side quest or an adventure. But we're going to go with a tower on an island, right? Well, our island's not very big, so we can certainly adjust that down the ring. And maybe it's a magical tower, right? We chose a mage tower, so it makes sense. Now we're going to put some fey plants inside of this uh, little island here. Sort of promote some color in the map. And then, you know, what what kind of things are in the fey? Maybe these are, I mean, these are wild fey shaman. Maybe these are... You know mystical creatures maybe tieflings live here you know depending on your game system anything could be living here right so let's add a little bit of mystique we're gonna pop some trees around you know you don't have to use purple there's a shader at the bottom you can change the hue and saturation again just going for the quick effect and at the right you can see your assets you can go back and edit them at any time if your story decides to change right one thing i do about maps is that as i'm building my campaigns it's fluid Right. If I'm making making choices, maybe the the party's first map wasn't overly accurate. You know, whatever floats your boat. Then, uh, you know, we're gonna add a little bit of terrain to this thing. We're just gonna shape it out. All right. Of course, you don't want to walk over there, so we're just gonna nip that. So now, now the party has to find a passageway over there. Right. No dock, no port, anything like that. Now we've got to find a way to get over there and back safely, not to mention the side quest involved, you know? Mage's tower, wizard's tower, maybe they can find spells or magic items. Maybe they have to fight a necromancer there, you know? Again, possibilities, all up to you. Almost every asset can be used. Clouds, right? Gonna add a little bit of mystery. We're just gonna decorate around with a little bit of cloud cover, you know? Why is there cloud cover? Is there a natural hot spring causing steam, you know? Is it a higher point? You know, all of these things we can kind of adjust on the fly. You know, start making these elements look nice and suddenly these ideas may just flow out of you, right? So, doo -doo, we're gonna add, you know, humans have only have two settlements. So we talk about them controlling the bay. Well, now they do control the bay. We're gonna slap another set of humans over here, you know, give them a little path to where they're going. And you can add the pass later. You can do whatever you like. Like I said, it's your map, it's your campaign. Certainly do what you like. Now, we've got some forests, we've got some mountains, lakes, water, we've got some grass areas. What can we do to change that up a little bit? Well, traditionally, what's what creepy and spooky, right? Ooh, so we could pop in a pit. You know, some, some famous movies have made use of some big pits in their day. And then we're just gonna select these mountains again. We're just gonna kind of surround it again. We found a pit in the asset menu. What can happen in the pit? You could fall down and could swallow people. It could be the source of a worm. You know, a civilization could be in there. Bats. You know, spell components for uh, various animal parts and things. Anything you want. All right. Now we've got a little bit of space here, and we've already sort of. Let's see, we've taken up a pretty good portion of the map. So speaking of islands, it's, uh, what if this, this is like a raised island, right? So we've got this island kind of set off below the dwarves. We're just gonna use some cliff faces, right? We're gonna do a broad outline with them, kind of connect them together. There doesn't have to be a rhyme and a reason. There can be if you like. So we're just gonna slap some cliffs on here. And then once we slap some clips on here, clips on here, we're going to go ahead and shape the land underneath it just to sort of match it, uh, make it match up. You know, plateau out in the water. Again, thinking about how this adds a challenge, right? So the party gets there, 
is this a 50 foot tall cliff that they have no way of scaling? You know, and then of course, what's on top of it? What could bring them here? Well, first step is getting over there, right? So we're gonna make it almost impassable, at least to the average uh, average traveler. I'm just gonna broaden out some of these cliff faces to, right? Once we've got a little bit of an outline, then we're gonna go back with some brush tools. And here's where we're gonna kinda, kinda flatten out the plateau, right? So we're just gonna level it off so it matches this is really sort of an aesthetic thing, but you know, sort of, sort of helps shape your land for you, doesn't it? Kind of had one idea at first with our random mouse movements, and now we're just gonna, you know, change it up. Now we're gonna let the assets dictate our land shape, right? Sort of a random aspect. You may not have had this shape in mind at first, you know, but where can it take you? Right? We're just gonna add her on in. And again, don't have to be precise, right? Most people aren't going to zoom in this detail on your map. So, and you're just kind of getting a broad idea. But look how that cliff is coming together. Just going to, yep. And once we get near the edges, and voila, right? We have a cliff. So, party gets over there. What are they going to find, right? What sorts of things are they going to run into? You know, could it be undead? Could it be a cult? Could it be a, a tribe of cannibals? You know, again, it could be anything. Uh, we haven't used, see, yep. Oh, we'll give them a little bit of a head start. So the dwarves are gonna have a little bit of a dock because they are on the water side. You know, you know, when you think about placing cities and things, one thing, cities tended to be near water or other resources, water, trees, mountains, things like that because of the resources available. So, you know, kind of build that into your planning. Now, abandoned items are always usually up near the top of the assets and incarnate. So we're just gonna choose a couple, see if I can fit a ship in here, but man, wherever that ship have crashed that made it visible, right? Like, yeah, I could stick one in, but how about we go add some things first? Maybe, maybe some mountains, nah, they don't look right. So we're gonna pop over to some stones. Stones, boulders, these are all choices, right? Some some rocks sticking out of the water. It's gonna give us an excellent place for a shipwreck, right? Again, we just, we're about to place a, a shipwreck. What happened to the ship? Where was it going? Where was it coming to? Was it coming from the dwarves? If it came from the dwarves, does it have a bunch of gold that they mined from their mines? Maybe, you know, was it going to the dwarves with some resources they don't have? Was it going to them with some wood, right? Maybe it got stuck because it was going to investigate something. So what about a cemetery? We're going to put some guard towers, you know, to protect it from the bay. Again, anything. Just choose an abandoned assets at this point, right? Boom. As you can tell, just choosing stuff from one list. Nothing particularly in mind. But all of a sudden, now we start to have an abandoned sort of feel, right? Like an island is sort of dying. Again, great place for undead, liches and warlocks and ghouls and things, right? Could be a hideout. You know, are we gonna find zombies inside the cemetery? Who knows? Again, the world is your oyster, right? Some dead trees represent the fact that, you know, everything around here is dead and abandoned. And, uh, Maybe, you know, we're missing something in the middle, right? So we've got a cemetery, we've got some towers. Yeah, we'll add a little dead foliage in there too, right? Some bushes. Kind of scale up to where you're going. Easy peasy. Right. And yeah, just slap a few in there, you know, and you're like, well, maybe there could be more. Slap some more, slap some less. You know, again, these things are all editable. Well, I like these brush tools, you can kind of pack them in all at once. Delete what kind of falls over the edge, great. Now, let's see, we've got some space in the middle. So perhaps we go over here and we choose, ooh, maybe an abandoned manor or an abandoned church. All right, we can cycle through the various ones. Could be a whole civilization. You know, we talk about zombies coming up from the cemetery. Maybe this is just an abandoned uh, place for, maybe it was elves, maybe it was humans, right? Pick a race, doesn't matter. Any species you put in here is gonna work. 
right? I'm going to add a little bit of texture, you know, to kind of give it a feel. Yep. Just kind of brush over it. Again, I'm, I'm changing that transparency as I go, just because I want a light effect. I don't need it to be overly saturated in like a black, bleak landscape. But now we've got an abandoned church, right? So could there have been clerics in the past? Is there, you know, what can, what can we find in an abandoned church? All kinds of things. A former, uh, you know, a former parish, right? Maybe a sect, a sect of clerics were, were there and they all got killed off for some reason, or they all decided to abandon because of maybe a sea monster. You know, maybe a plague is on that island. People go there and there's poison checks and things like that. So just as easy as you can stick something on a map, right? Hopefully this is giving you guys some ideas. But again, you can almost insert anything. Yeah, and I like to kind of scroll through and figure out what I want to do, but let's take this little space up here, right? We can put a number of things there. It could be another port. It could be another civilization. I'm thinking we don't have any sort of neutrals. So what about like a nomadic tribe of people? You know, it doesn't have to be a tribe specific, but we think of history as a great place to pull some inspiration from. What about uh, a sediment like the Vikings, right? Nomadic people, they travel to far lands, they raid, they conquer, they, you know, inhabit different lands. So maybe we'll stick uh, like a nomadic tribe up here. You know, talking about story plot uh, ideas, maybe they travel to the continent and they're uh, forming their own sort of civilization over here on the corner, sneaking in where there's no other civilization. Maybe they're natives, right? <clears throat> maybe they're native to the world and they actually just are separated from what we think of as a civilized world, right? So how are they gonna get there? Well, they're gonna get there by boat, right? So could they have conquered other people? Could they be the shipwreck at the bottom of the map, right? Just gonna throw a quick name on here real quick. Save, because I got kind of far without saving, you know? So even just boom, we inserted a tribe and now all of a sudden we possibly have another adversary or another ally to fall back on. All right. So, as you can tell, we've got a lot of the map covered. So from here, I'm gonna look around. What about, what about this empty space up here, right? So, you know, we could throw all kinds of cover. You don't wanna necessarily have a big place, uh, big plains. Maybe you do, maybe you want a big open space. Me, I think, I'm thinking some more forest, right? Because forest gives us some opportunities for uh, merchants, for another civilization of some sort, another nomadic people, monster encounters, quest items. You know, so what sort of things can be buried inside of a forest? All right, we're gonna line it up here, just sort of fill it in a little bit. And all the time I'm thinking, well, we're near humans, we're near elves. You know, what sorts of possibilities could be in here? It could be something super simple. It could be something as simple as just monsters people want out of the forest so that they can harvest more trees, right? You know, and uh, what we're gonna separate these forests a little bit. We're gonna bring these mountains down just so it separates the, the peninsula there. Gives us a reason for why our road kind of curved around them. And then, uh, you know, flare them up just a little bit. But as you can tell, every icon you place down can be a plot starter or finisher for that matter, right? kind of mix them in there. So we got the, the terrain sort of blending in, the mountains head over toward the elves. And really, you know, we've got some empty space still. And then we can fill those or we can leave them empty. But what kind of terrain do we not have yet, right? We talk about all kinds of uh, adversaries, monsters, ghouls, goblins, witches. So what if, we, uh, what if we eliminated some terrain here, right? Now suddenly it starts to look like we might have a swamp. Well, what kind of things do swamps give us? Well, they give us monster encounters with snakes and spiders and rats, alligators, uh, all sorts of natural creatures, things like will-o'-wisps uh, and other supernatural beings. It gives us opportunities to place in hags and witches and, you know, people who might capture uh, the humans that are walking by. So it gives us a lot of opportunity to grow from there. So we're gonna populate this with a few swamp-style trees you know, just uh, take up a little bit of that uh, space and give it give it some character like a mangrove forest or you know just a regular good old swamp down in the bayou 
you know, we're going to shape the ground a little bit to give it that impression that it's you know sort of branching out and killing some of the ground around it, muddying it up a little bit. I'm going to pick a couple more. What do we got here? And again, just kind of scrolling through, looking for ideas. We're going to we'll thicken it up a little bit so there's some underbrush. So as you enter the swamp, there's some brush that covers a lot of the things so you can't quite see in. There's thick undergrowth all through this swamp. So then, again, we have that opportunity to make a challenge for our players or, you know, just add a little bit of life to it. Or, frankly, just decorate your map with it. You know, choice is really up to you. And, yeah, we're going to see. Just shade a little bit. This whole valley is maybe kind of started to be taken over by the swamp or maybe uh, the valley's pushing the swamp back out to the ocean. You know, again, options. Then um, I'm gonna put some forest down here. We're just gonna blend those up to the swamp, so get that terrain sort of meeting. So then, you know, you could broaden up your encounters. You could go from forest creatures and bears and things like that all the way, like set up to swamp creatures, supernatural or regular natural creatures. And then what feeds the swamp? Right? We already kind of have a lake, so you know, we just throw a river on here, expand this out just a little bit. Kind of bring it up from the mountain, you know, maybe down the road there's something that blocks that off and dries the swamp up. Maybe that's one of the missions. Maybe that's a good side quest. You know, that town wants you to come and uh, fix the water problem so it stops being so much of a swamp. Well, that should just about wrap it up for today. Hopefully you learned a little bit about map making and a little bit more about storytelling. Make your adventure your own. Start with a map. Invent your own ideas. As always, we ask you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed our content today, and leave a comment below if you'd like to see a topic for future videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.